Chapter One of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. The Epistle to the Hebrews, the knowledge of the Son of God, the secrets of the true Christian life, first half doctrinal, chapters one through to ten eighteen, the Son of God, the mediator of the better covenant. The theme, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, the glory of the Son in his person and work. The Son in whom God hath spoken. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2. God, having of old time spoken unto the fathers in the prophets by diverse portions and in diverse manners, hath at the end of these days spoken unto us in his Son. God hath spoken. The magnificent portal by which we enter into the temple in which God is to reveal his glory to us. We are at once brought into the presence of God himself. The one object of the epistle is to lead us to God, to reveal God, to bring us into contact with himself. Man was created for God. Sin separated from God. Man feels his needs and seeks for God. This epistle comes with the gospel message of redemption to teach us where and how to find God. Let all who thirst for God, for the living God, draw nigh and listen. God hath spoken. Speaking is the vehicle of fellowship. It is a proof that the speaker considers him he addresses as capable of fellowship with himself, a token that he longs for that fellowship. Man was created for fellowship with God. Sin interrupted it. Nature speaks of God and his work, but of himself, his heart, and his thoughts of love towards us as sinners, nature cannot tell. In his deepest misery, man seeks for God, but how often to all appearance in vain. But God be praised, not for always. The silence has been broken. God calls man back to fellowship with himself. God hath spoken. God hath spoken. For a time, imperfectly and provisionally in the prophets, in preparation for the more perfect revelation of himself. But now at length the joyful tidings are heard. God hath spoken in his Son. God, the infinite, incomprehensible, unseen one, hath spoken, and that in his Son. O oh, the joy and the glory! Who can measure it? Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. God hath spoken. When man speaks, it is the revelation of himself, to make known the otherwise hidden thoughts and dispositions of his heart. When God, who dwells in light that is inaccessible, speaks out of the heights of his glory, it is that he may reveal himself. He would have us know how he loves us and longs for us, how he wants to save and to bless, how he would have us draw nigh and live in fellowship with himself. God hath spoken in his Son. The ministry of angels and prophets was only to prepare the way. It never could satisfy the heart either of God or man. The real power of the life of God, the full experience of his nearness, the true deliverance from sin, the shedding abroad of the love in the heart, this could not be communicated by the ministry of creatures. The Son himself had to come as the Word of God to us, the bearer of the life and love of the Father. The Son himself had to come to bring us into living contact with the divine being, to dwell in our heart as he dwells in God's heart, to be in us God's Word as he is in God, and so to give us the living experience of what it means that God speaks to us. God hath spoken. The words of a man carry weight according to the idea I have of his wisdom, his veracity, his power, his love. The words of God. Who can express what they ought to be worth to us? Each word carries with it all the life of God, all his saving power and love, God speaking in his Son. Surely they who have begun to know him will be ready to cast aside everything for the sake of hearing him. God hath spoken. The words of men have often exerted a wonderful and a mighty influence. 
but the words of god they are creative deeds they give what they speak he spake and it was done when god speaks in his son he gives him to us not only for us and with us but in us he speaks the son out of the depth of his heart into the depths of our heart men's words appeal to the mind or the will the feelings or the passions god speaks to that which is deeper than all to the heart that central depth within us whence are the issues of life let us believe the mighty quickening power god's word will have god hath spoken speaking claims hearing god asks but one thing it is so simple and right that we should listen shall we not hearken in holy reverence and worship with whole-hearted attention and surrender to what he would say to us in this epistle too we too shall know what the power and the joy is of god speaking to us in his son god is a spirit as such he has no other way of communicating to us his life or his love but by entering our spirit and dwelling and working there there he causes christ to dwell and there he speaks to us in christ these words of redeeming love and power which bring life to us the words of christ can bring us no profit except as they unfold to us what god is working in us and direct us to what is to be revealed in our heart it is the heart god wants let us open the whole heart to listen and to long god hath spoken in his son the living jesus come forth from the fiery furnace of god's holiness from the burning glow of everlasting love he himself is the living word let us seek in the study of this epistle in which his glory is so wondrously revealed to come into contact with him to receive him into our hearts to take him as our life that he may bring us to the father in the beginning god spake let there be light and there was light even so now he speaks with creative power in his son and the presence and the light of christ become the life and the light of the soul what trouble people take to learn a foreign language to have access to its writers let no trouble be too great to understand the language of god his word his son to learn a foreign language i get someone who knows it to teach me the language of god is heavenly spiritual supernatural altogether divine only the holy spirit can teach me to understand it to think god's own thoughts let me take him as my teacher and abram fell on his face and god talked with him as personally and directly even more wonderfully and effectually will god speak to me in his son but deep holy reverence and an intense desire to know what god says must be the spirit in which i study the epistle and hearken to the blessed son heavenly truth is nowhere spoken but by the voice of christ nor heard but by the power of christ living in the hearer he that is of god heareth god's words it is only he who yields himself to the new nature who can truly know what god's speaking in christ is during christ's life the word of god was thrice heard each time it was this is my beloved son hear him i have glorified him let us allow god to speak this one word into our hearts my beloved son O oh my god speak to me in thy son O oh, speak that one word out of the depth of thine heart into the depth of my heart end of chapter one